Hi, I'm Kat Curry Williams. And I'm Robin Radin. And this is Wine, Women, and Chocolate. And today we are so excited to have <laughs> the wonderful Susan Anton with us. Hi, hey, ladies. Hi. This is so fantastic. I'm thrilled that you're doing this. Oh, I just met Susan just about a minute ago, a minute and 30 yeah. years ago. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, it's really funny, Robin, because not only do we go way back, but our husbands, uh, who are younger than us, <laughs> they, uh, <laughs> they we, met. That's how we roll. <laughs> of course. Um, that's how we stay young, having younger husbands. But they met. Uh, way before we did as, as actors uh, going out on auditions for commercials. Is that right? Many, many years ago. So when we reconnected, at, well, we've been married 30 years almost, so we reconnected 30 years ago. Um, or Jeff and Scott did anyway, and that's when I met you 30 years ago. Yeah, yeah. And, and we were we were just tots. When we remember when we were on our little bike tricycle. We, <laughs> we were, I believe it, I believe we it was elementary a, school. Yeah. Children rides. Children yeah. rides. And <laughs> since right. then, you you've just You've just blossomed, Susan. You've well, just become more than um, more than meets the eye, and and I know uh, Robin hasn't uh, heard so much about you. Well, fabulous. that's the thing. We really need to share your story with people who may not be familiar with it because you okay. do have quite a story. Well, you know, it's interesting, Robin, because uh, we all have an interesting be beginning. I think everybody has. Everybody at this table. And everybody that's watching has a great story. Mine began in a little town in Southern California called Ukaipa, Y-U-C-A-I-P-A. And you, you never heard about it? Your, your, your stage man, manager knows about it. But uh, a lot of people know Ukaipa. If you're coming from L.A., you're going out to Palm Springs, you'll see Ukaipa. And then up from Ukaipa is Oak Glen. And Oak Glen is where I was raised on an apple ranch. Wow. And I went to a one-room schoolhouse uh, when I was in the third grade. I, w I rode my horse to school there. I was raised with my three brothers and my sister. And, and so I have a real traditional upbringing. So the fact that I found my way into show business and had a really blessed career for, golly, 40 plus years now is kind of an, an incredible thing. So anything is possible in this right. world. How did you find your way from Apple Valley to Hollywood? <laughs> to Valley Village? Uh, <laughs> yes, because on the way, there was a, glo a Golden Globe nominee there for, was. Um, yeah. for Golden Girl. My first movie, yeah. And then your own series had, on NBC. Yeah. I had, I, I, uh, there was a lot that happened. It all started on a dare from a high school boyfriend uh, who's still a dear friend today. His name is Keith Chesky. And when I was uh, 17, I was, I'm, I'm, I'm really tall. I'm 5'11". And so I was very shy and a little insecure. And he was a star athlete on campus. Mm -hmm. And he encouraged me to enter the local beauty pageant, which I thought was a terrible idea until I saw that there was a talent portion. And I loved singing because um, I was the oldest daughter daughter of the five kids, and so mom and dad were always working, and I was the head babysitter. So I did like all good babysitters, and I watched a lot of television. Sure. And that's where I fell in love with the, music, the musicals, and I decided I wanted to do that. So on this dare, I decided to enter this pageant and sing a song, and lo and behold, I won, and then I went on to become Miss uh, California, and then second runner-up to Miss America, and that's when I decided that I was going to throw my hat over the fence and pursue show business, and, and it's you were pointing out, I got really blessed. Fred wow. Silverman saw me on Merv Griffin and The Tonight Show, and Fred Silverman was president of uh, ABC at the time, and he signed me to a production deal there, and then when he went to NBC, so I had a lot of my own TV shows, and I did movies along the way. And Wait, do you remember the song you sang I in high school? I that same exact You question. guys are cute. Exactly. Well, I have to paint the picture for you, because I, I was an A&W car hop at the time, so I was putting in many miles a day on roller on skates. Roller yep. That's and, a, 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 another bond that we have. Mm. Yes. <laughs> I was a roller skating uh, <laughs> yeah. actress myself. A roller skating actress. Now, we need to get into that yeah. one. So, um, I was really tall and really skinny, and uh, I decided that, and, and I'm all of 17 years old from this little town of Ukaipa, and I decided that the song I was going to sing was a torch song, because when you're 17 from Yucaipa, California, you really have so much to torch about. <laughs> and so I sang, um, you made me leave my happy home. You took my love and now you're gone since I fell for you. And that was the song I sang. Oh, really? Yeah, that was the very first song yeah. I ever sang on stage. Wow. Even if I knew yeah. that, I forgot it. So it's only <laughs> you all exciting again. <laughs> so that, that was the first one. So now when I, I do my uh, show, I, I have to always 
you know, put that song in there and say, now at this age, I do know from where I torch. I've, <laughs> I've had my heart broken. I know what a torch song is now. Yeah. What it's, was it like for you, though, to, to go from there to Miss America? It was mind-blowing. I'll tell you what was really interesting, gals, is because uh, this is back in 1969, 70, and women's live movement is on the rise. And so the beauty pageant scene was not what the ladies were into at the time, yeah. even though there were very few places yeah. where a woman could get a, a scholarship to continue her education, and Miss America is based purely on scholarship. It's a, a scholarship program. Um, and so we had protests. Out, we were in Atlantic City, and the convention hall there was circled with, you know, women burning their bras, and it was kind of a dangerous wow. climate. It was, you were probably one of them. Yeah. No, you were too young. You were too no, young. You were uh, still in your training no. bra. You weren't there yet. You were still on. <laughs> right. But uh, it was kind of mind-boggling to be in Atlantic City. Uh, you know, we were pretty protected from what was going on outside, but, and the police were there to take care of us and everything. And I was just, I'll never forget being on stage that first night, I think it, there was like 30,000 people in attendance. It was massive. And you're up there on this giant stage. And you know how when you all have a moment where you go, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to be on a stage. This mm. feels right. This feels like How many people like were home. in the audience? About 15,000. Yeah, that was a question I have. How many people are the most people you've ever performed in front of? Because well, when I toured with Kenny Rogers at the height of his success, so we were playing in, you know, like uh, like like you would the uh, Staples Center. So wow. 50,000 or whatever on every night. And the country music fans are so incredible because I did have one country hit. It was a top 10 country hit. They were so nice to me. They were so nice to me. They just really embraced me and... and uh, I toured with Kenny for a couple of years. So 15,000 was the first, like, outing. Yeah. Oh, my God. First of all, that's what yeah. I have to say. Talk about the big show. <laughs> it was incredible. You know, and I was so sure when I got into the top five, and back in the day, the host at that time was Burt Parks, who was legendary for the time. And uh, he would bring the five finalists over one at a time to ask uh, the, the all-important question to determine who the next Miss America should be, you know. And so I... I was so sure when it was my turn to walk over there that my heart was pounding so hard that the microphone would pick it up. Oh. And I was, it was just boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. yeah, because there's this, I'd watched this as a girl growing up. It was like, you know, back in the day when Miss America came on, it was... It was it one was, of the five shows, five... Yeah, <laughs> shows the, the, one of the five <laughs> that we had to watch. So we were glued right. to the TV because yeah. it was... Um, it was like the Super Bowl back then. Yeah. It was a TV. big deal yeah. before, you know, it all became... It's it's fallen out of step today, and I understand the reason for all of that. Yeah. You know, as women, we've evolved, and we've got other ways in which to, to you know, make our mark and, you know, get our foot in the door and all of that, and we don't have to rely just on that avenue. But it was a very viable one at the time, mm -hmm. and one of the few that were available to us. So it was it was pretty extraordinary to be standing there on the stage next to Burt Parks and and then he asked me the all important question and he's like, yes. Well Miss California, when do you think is the proper time to marry? I'm going like I'm 17 years old. I'm standing wow. here. I think, do, I don't know. So I wanted to say, well, when you're pregnant. <laughs> I said, I said, heaven only knows. And I went back and I sat at my chair and the entire auditorium erupted in laughter. And Bert Parks had no idea what was going on because he's waiting for me to go, well, you know, after I've been married, I mean, dating him for 10 years and he has a solid job and then perhaps we should get married. I don't know what he was waiting for. And so he followed me back to the chair and he said, what did you say? And I said, heaven only knows. Well, TV Guide picked upon it. It was like, did I ended up not winning. Uh, <laughs> I said, did her flip answer cost her the crown? And on and on and oh. on. It became very controversial and they wow. stopped asking the question. Ah. They took the question you out know, of the... I was a game changer. Right then and what there. What can I tell you? As what are we drinking today? How would today? you know what, as what a 17 year old girl when's the proper I, time to marry? Cheers I, to I, that. Cheers, cheers, cheers to, that. to that. We're drinking a fabulous Pinot Called. We are. This is from Walt Wines, and it's a 2020 mm. Pinot Noir from the, it's called mm. Blue Jay, and it's from the Anderson Valley. So let's mm. give it a taste. That is yummy. Yum. Yummy. Happy New Year. Happy everything. This, Thank you, Walt. This is so good, and we're drinking it in the She Angels Ooh. Foundation 
glass. So it's all good. Oh, that is really nice. Mm, it is. Okay, so just a sip? Okay. I thought this was a drinking show. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, we that could, was different. We could turn that into that. Every it's time, your show, whatever you <laughs> want it to be. We could do, what would be the magic word? Every time we say she. Okay. <laughs> oh, see, I like this. Did I, did I say um, who's going to be co-hosting with us and, and, and on and on? You know, all that. You know what I'm going to say? What what is next? You asked the question that I you went from that to that next question, which is like you shared the stage with some absolute oh, legends. I did. I did. Legends. Legends. I, you know, it's it, my whole life has been like this incredible full circle moment from like whether it was, was watching Miss America as a little girl and then being in the pageant, but also at that same time when I was the babysitter watching TV, falling in love with show business, Frank Sinatra. I watched Frank, every movie that came on the TV with Frank Sinatra or Doris Day or any of those classic stars from that time. I, you know, I was just riveted. And so my career starts to happen. And one of my favorite, favorite people was, was Sammy Davis Jr. And I'd read his book, Yes, I Can. And I, that's the first time I was, I was aware of true racism because mm-hmm. the little town that I was from, it just wasn't there. So I wasn't aware of what was happening in the world. I lived in a little bit of a bubble. So when I read his book, I was just, horrified and shocked and it was I couldn't understand it and uh, I was able he was uh, performing at the Sands Hotel I was now 19 and my still high school boyfriend he said what do you want to do for New Year's I I saw that Sammy was there at, at the Sands I said I want to see Sammy Davis Jr. so we got to see Sammy Davis Jr. and it changed my life I thought that's it. That that's it. Can you imagine that she sees him and then she sings with him. And then him I and got like, to work like, with him. No. You know, so you get a call to work with Sammy and then I got a call to work with Frank and go on tour with Frank for a year and a on half. Tour. So could you imagine I mean the people No, it was incredible. Well, you know, it's like taking a master class every night for me wow. because I'd stand in the wings and learn so much not just uh, as how they were as performers mm-hmm. but how they were when they weren't in the spotlight how they were with their fans and other people and for whatever stories that anybody has to tell about anybody who's famous which they always make many up I know what I saw and experienced with Frank Sinatra and and Sammy Davis Jr. and Elvis Presley and all of them Kenny Rogers great Elvis kind Presley. Too? Caring people. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Tom Jones. Oh, oh the list goes on and on. You know. Tell but, us something about Frank Sinatra. Well, you know, Frank had, he was magical. He truly, he, he really had stardust all around him. You know, there's some people that are just stars. Mm-hmm. Paul Newman. I, I got to know Paul Newman. Paul Newman, there's just a quality about them. And one of the most incredible abilities that Sinatra had, it's like like Michael Jordan on a basketball court or Kobe Bryant. They see everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They see the whole court. They see the people in the stands. They see the clock. They know they are so tuned in. And Sinatra was the same way. If you were at a function with him, and there could be hundreds of people, and he would call over the, the waiter and go, Mrs. You know, Gregory Peck's wife over in the corner there, Veronica, her cup is empty. Please go take care of it. And he just saw everything that was going on all and the time. And he was present at the same time. And at the same time. Always, always, always. Oh. So, you know, one my favorite story with, with Sinatra was uh, we were in San Francisco doing a show. And there was a whole host of other celebrities, David Brenner, Buddy Rich, a lot of people. And... My mom, I flew my mom and dad up because mom was a Bobby Soxer. She loved Sinatra when she was a little girl. Like I loved oh. the Beatles when I was a little girl. Mm-hmm. And so she came up and and we, uh, he, she met Frank and she looked so pretty that night. It was really cute and daddy was elegant. And, and uh, the, the, Frank asked for a photo of everybody. So we're all standing in this long line and there's Frank in the middle. I'm next to him. And then, you know, maybe David Brenner or whoever. And my mom and dad are on the end. And before the photographer took the picture, he said, wait, wait, wait. And Sinatra got out of line. He went over and he got my mom and brought her right into the center. He said, a lady never stands on the end of the line. Put her <sighs> dead center. You know, hubba, that's why. Wow. <laughs> so he was, he was a hubba hubba. Yeah. You know, he really, the man, he was just, he was incredible. Yeah, and he, yeah. he held that for uh, quite some time. Right, until you know? the day he died, yeah, I think, I mean, you know, literally, not, yeah. Women, I, I have another friend, Laura Patterson's mom, who's uh, 
knew him well. And Did she? The stories oh, I'll were bet. just beautiful, beautiful mm-hmm. stories. She was, you know, had a relationship with him. So yeah. having the inside story of yeah. that, yeah. he was a wonderful man. And well, and there's so I many people that in, hearing it. in show business, too, along the way that if he heard that you were in trouble, you couldn't pay your medical bills, he would, he, you know, he that's would just right. take care of it. You that, know, you would go, you know, Mr. Sinatra took care of it. It's like, oh. So we go from Mr. Sinatra yeah. to, well, we can be here, we, you know, we this is a 30-minute podcast, so we're <laughs> well, going to have to cut to show because, two, you know, three, yeah, four, and five. Yeah, you know what, I've been around so long. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I'm jumping, all, I am jumping all over the place, because that's what I love to do. Yay, I love to jump. Dudley Moore. Dudley, yeah. And, and and Arthur, I mean, I guess we can drink to that. Oh, that and then we can that. hear a little that bit does of the story require. there. Once in your life, you will find her. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so mm. you... Uh, What's the, the Dudley what Moore story? Well, um, <clears throat> Dudley. Dudley came into my life... I had just finished, uh, I had gone, I was, I'd gone through a heartbreaking a breakup with another famous person. And so that person, you know, and I'm... Because we're not, not dropping any names here. Uh, not, we no. don't need to drop all of them. But anyway, <laughs> um, and so I was doing this award show and I was at rehearsal. And I remember sitting in the back of the theater. And you know, when you have a hard heartbreak, you're just kind of like down and out, and I hadn't eaten in months, and I was skinny and sad and all of that that goes with my heart is broken kind of mm-hmm. conversation. And I'm sitting in the back of, uh, the, I think it was the Wiltern, and it was uh, the Great American Movie Awards, and I'm sitting back there waiting for my time at a rehearsal, and 10 had just been out, and smashing success. Oh, yeah. And Dudley was one of the hosts of the show, and he came out for rehearsal, and he went up to do his bit. And I heard this thing coming out of me, like that I hadn't heard in a while, and it was laughter. It was just full on laughter. And I thought, I need to know this guy. This is the medicine for my soul right now. I need to laugh. And so um, we said hello at rehearsal, and then we hunted each other down at Chasen's afterwards at the after party and said our goodbyes. Uh, and then the next day, we both at the same time called our press agents and said, find that person. Oh, wow. Uh, and uh, I was working in Vegas at the time. And so he flew in and we had a lot, a lot of conversations on the phone. And so we thought this was a really good idea. And then he got there and he, I got off stage and I had my three inch heels on and, oh, and <laughs> Dudley's five, two and a half. I'm 5'11", and then I had three inches. Really on. five yeah. two and a half. He was five two and a half. Wow! And I got off the stage, and I'm like, I don't know if this is such a good idea. And he's like, I'm not so sure. We didn't say it out loud, but we're wondering. And uh, so it's like, well, what do you want to do? It's um, you know, it's, it's like one o'clock in the morning because I had a midnight show, and it's like. Well, there's the Chinese restaurant. Let's go there. Okay. So the awkward, awkward sitting there and kind of making conversation. And then we're both old enough at this point and been through enough. It's like, you know what? This is silly. You know what I really want to do? I said to him, I said, I want to go to my room. I don't want any hanky-panky. I have a beautiful bottle of wine, and I just really want to talk to you. And he said, cool. And because Dudley was very wise, he, you know, was born with a club foot. He had been in therapy his whole life. He had a great deal of understanding about how we operate as people, and especially those of us that, you know, are damaged. And we all are damaged to some degree. We all walk around with yes, little scars. And, and we get to then damage our kids. Mm-hmm. You know, it's... it's Which a, we try the opposite to do, but mm-hmm. then, then... You, you can't know, help it. We just... You do. know, it, yeah. it's an unintentional damage. It's right. an unintentional thing, but it's a part of yeah, our evolution yeah. of how we grow. But how would repair happen if there was, a, you know, there's something good on the other side of that. There always is, you know, and it's like that wonderful thing that you sent me with Marianne Williamson's, it really is how you choose to see it. Yeah. We create, uh, what, what did she say? What it was it? It was so cre- you, great this you morning. You create each uh, the world, day. The world you, you, see. you see. You create the world you see. Yeah. So, and I believe that. I believe that the more you, fo- whatever you focus on, you get more of. Yeah. So you want to focus on the joy. And so jo- Dudley had the gift of that. And so we, sp- we sat up all night long talking. And by, you know, early in the morning, we realized that we really, this is, this is going to be a real relationship. And so for eight years, we were together. 
Wow. Yeah. yeah, and remained friends until he died. Sweet Dudley, yeah. And she, she uh, one of my favorite movies, of course, everyone's favorite movies, is Arthur. And if it's mm-hmm. not, Fabulous. Don't, yeah. don't talk to me. It's so great. And yeah. she picked up the script. Cause <gasps> well, it was so funny, yeah, the script. Because when I met him, he had just gotten the script. Uh, the script, yeah. And um, he, because uh, he was going to be shooting this movie soon, and he said... Uh, I said, well, I, I, oh, I remember what I was. We decided to take our romance on a little holiday, and so we went to uh, New, um, Mexico, wherever he did ten, wherever that was, where he did, you know, was with Bo Derek and ten. I can't remember somewhere. what was somewhere. Anyway, and he rented this little house, and it had a swimming pool and all of that. And I just remember lying by the pool and him reading the script, and he was like, he turned the page, ah ha. <laughs> just and that cackle of his, and he just kept laughing. And I was like, "What are you reading?" He said, "This script. It's so funny." He said, "If you're lucky, when you're doing a comedy, you get a script that maybe every five pages you get one good laugh." Mm-hmm. Arthur was like five laughs on every page, and he's like the you know the the responsibility to make sure that you don't that you honor the material, you know, was something that he realized that he'd been handed gold. Mm -hmm. And what was amazing about that, you put that in the hands of somebody else, uh, other comedians had an opportunity at it before Dudley did. They didn't see the humor in this guy that was a drunk and, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, kind of this kind of playboy, irresponsible kid. Um, But Dudley knew the heart of Arthur because his comedy team, Peter Cook, Dudley Moore and Peter Cook in London were smashing success, and Peter Cook was a raging alcoholic. And so Dudley knew how to play this character just left of center who's trying to be present but can't quite be and, and see, find that's the where soul. the damaged child yeah. therapy came in for a, yeah. a, a, was a boon for him. And, and that's that, what, you know, and he made the really, movie funny. Oh, I mean, yeah. and, and it, with such heart and, yeah. s- uh, you know, yeah. b- brilliant, brilliant. It was really it brilliant. brilliant. And I, and I was really lucky to be there on the set when they were making this classic movie. Mm-hmm. And I just remember when John Gilgood was to, Sir John <laughs> Gilgood was filming his scene where he's dying and he's talking to Arthur and telling him that he's been a good son. And this scene is going so well. And Sir Gilgood won an Academy Award for his performance, but he's doing the scene and this fly comes into this like <laughs> oh. <laughs> lands right on and Sir John Gilgood. But Arthur, I want you, it doesn't break nothing. But Dudley's like, <laughs> <laughs> and this is the death scene. No, we have to cut and do this over. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. Oh, I mean, the, the, it's just, it's, it's great. It's brilliant. And, and what, a, what an arc. Yeah. From, uh, what an arc. I mean, I don't even know what to say past that because it goes from, you know, um, Apple Valley to you, Kaiba. Oh, me, your to arc. your yeah. arc. No, your arc of yeah. of um, people in your yeah. life yeah. that influenced you from a young age, and you you kept. Um, I know you. You're pretty steadfast, and you don't drink too much. You love wine. <laughs> let's say, let's say to that. I know Pigs, you love, drink you love wine, and we're all. Um, um, Got to touch and women, mm. and we, we have. I adore women. Women and, and power great, to the girls. You know, all great things, but you and you, men, and well, of course, and men. Oh, yeah, we we love those too, the <laughs> especially the one I'm married to, since we're talking about all these other fellas. Yes, <laughs> let's not forget Jeff Lester. Yes, and he's he's a oh, he's a cutie, he's a cutie, and a keeper. Yeah. But with with all of that, you really have you didn't fall down the traps of alcoholism right. or drugs or you know really going off the rails you know you sing you still sing you're, mm, you know, especially you're starting Vegas. so young right i was i was really lucky i think a lot of, a lot of that had to do with coming from a pretty grounded childhood i think being raised in this little town and you know my mom and dad were hard workers excuse me let me get a, get a little sip of water here I haven't talked this much in a long time since, <laughs> you know, since COVID. And, and we, we have like four minutes left, and we're yeah. going to go to Cat's Quickies. But I have. I, want to do I that. think this is going to be one of two. I think we're going to go one and then two mm-hmm. episodes because we're just on a roll. And we, we're just, just getting started. You don't even know my favorite apple recipe. Yeah, oh, my goodness. I have so, so much to do. <laughs> so should we continue or should we ask Cat's Quickies in the second 
round of... I think we have time for Cat's Quickies before okay. we say I goodbye. I want to hear Cat's okay. Quickies. Episode. Because we have to ask you, what oh. comes to mind? I will say okay. the first one. What, what's the feeling that comes to mind when I say wine? Women. <laughs> <laughs> I tried that disassociation thing. Yes, it didn't and work. Women. What feeling evokes what thoughts? you? What thoughts? What I think of women? A sisterhood, strength, power... You know, got your back. Mm. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And what about when you hear the word chocolate? I think of that movie with Johnny Depp. <laughs> <laughs> chocolate, that movie with Johnny Depp. Was he in Chocolate? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Ooh, I shouldn't say that. Uh, I should know that. No, that's I love all right. It. <laughs> um, and, and our third and favorite question, you asked. No, that our question. second question oh. is um, I went right. If to you the- had to choose between wine and chocolate, which wine. would wine. you choose? Oh, I didn't even get to the end of the question. Wine, I'm, hands down. Wine, wine, wine. I, I don't have a huge sweet tooth, but I tell you, after I've had a decent amount of wine, chocolate tastes real good. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> it's, it's, it does. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My so husband good. always knows when I've had maybe just a little, because I start looking and I said, honey, because he likes to have sweets. I said, baby, where's that chocolate bar you bought? Mm. He goes, oh, you've had maybe one glass too many. Yeah. Mm. That's looking <laughs> good to you. It is good, though. <laughs> yeah. It really is right after. It yeah. does just... go well with red and a pinot. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then the last question, can you tell us one woman who you'd like to shout out today who has helped shape you into who you are today? Oh, golly. Um, well, she's not here, so she has to hear me from heaven, my mom, mm. Llewellyn. Llewellyn, maiden name Wilshire, married name Anton. Strong force of a, you know, beautiful woman came up, you know, her, her husband was in two wars. She had five kids. They never had a lot of money, uh, but they made a beautiful home for all five of us. And she came through a lot of challenges of, of uh, health wise. She was, you know, a widow for 10 years and she got up and went to silver sneakers every day and walked and puttered in her garden. Wow. She was just, a, you know, so my mom. Your mom. Mm. Well, let's drink to her to name. Lou. Toast Lou. To Lou. Lou Ellen. Lou Ellen Wilshire. Yeah, Lou Anton. Ellen Wilshire Anton. Anton. So, Cheers thank you. you. Thank you, ladies. Mm. Well, we should come back. Okay. Um, with the apple pie recipe. It's so, oh, <laughs> Better to start than with apple pie because you know wine, women, and chocolate apple pie. Yeah, we all have pie. to do this, yes. right? And uh, do you agree, Rob? I agree. <laughs> so join us for our next episode, and we will see you then. Bye, Bye everyone. <laughs> Ten sixteen entertainment.